Good afternoon, everyone. The COVID-19 pandemic authorized. Big data has been a crucial means to tackle and keep track of the COVID-19 cases. In the healthcare industry, big data has been used in medical records of patients, results of medical examinations, as well as devices used to provide real-time clinical or medical care. As of 30th October 2020, there have been 5.1 million reported cases globally. In Singapore alone, there is more than 58,000 reported cases. With community cases going undetected due to asymptomatic cases, it is increasingly tricky to identify such cases. Countries who failed to effectively curb the virus have led to the suffering of their country's healthcare system. Singapore has seen success in picking up undetected cases through the utilization of big data. For instance, the Trace Together token and Safe Entry Checking. Big data is massive volumes of data, and it can come in many different forms. It, it can come from social media, email, medical records, etc. A part of big data is machine learning. Machine learning involves the use of software to learn from data to create models. The resulting model is then used in decision making. Decision making comprises of performing tasks such as association, segmentation, and prediction. Nonetheless, there is hope for all countries to change the course of the pandemic. We will now consult with some of our big data experts to delve in depth into how big data has helped to take out the pandemic. Well, hello everyone. Okay, thank you, Joey. So what is association? Association is finding out interesting relationship among the independent variables in the data. So one example is DSTAR's network analysis tool. So at the onset of the pandemic, right, uh, cases started to increase and the problem faced was that there was no known linkages between the infected cases. And this is due to two problems. The first is because Singapore is densely populated. And the second is because the virus acts as an invincible enemy. Okay, just one minute of contact could already spread the virus from an infected person to a non-infected person. Right? So what the network analysis tool does, it helps to uh, present a visual network of cases, uh, which helps to identify the commonalities and the linkages between the confirmed and the potential cases. Okay, so as we shall see in this simplified slide, right, a simplified version of how this network analysis tool works, okay, we could identify where the infected cases went, we could identify who the infected cases came into contact with, and we could help to identify potential clusters. So as in the case with all machine learning tasks, there are advantages and disadvantages of it. Okay. So the first advantage is that it helps to map out and sift through loads of information and help to identify potential clusters timely and to a certain extent accurately. Right. The second advantage, it helps to supplement and augment physical tracing efforts, right, reducing the cognitive load on physical traces, right? But one challenge face of one challenge of network analysis tool is that it faces the problem of data veracity, right? So data veracity is just one of the four commonly agreed upon characteristics of big data. And in this instance, right, um, it was difficult for infected cases to actually identify accurately where they went and who they came into contact with. So now I'll be passing the time over to Eunice, who will be explaining what segmentation is. Segmentation is a branch of machine learning that puts individuals into groups based on their known characteristics and it does so through a process called clustering. So what clustering does is it relies on unsupervised learning which means the models learn to group the data based on the inputted attributes which is the independent variables and there are no fixed solutions as the data sets do not contain dependent variables. Clustering is an important technique used in preparing Singapore to reopen its border safely. The, no the novel coronavirus can rapidly spread in confined and crowded places and this makes Singapore with its high population density a high-risk target with an increased risk of transmission. Thus, there is a need to detect and control imported cases as travellers begin to flock in from countries that have varying degrees of success in controlling the virus. Clustering aids this by identifying countries' COVID-19 risk levels. High risk means there is a high possibility that a traveller from that country might be a carrier of the virus while low risk corresponds to a lower possibility. According to the risk level of their country of origin, different sets of quarantine measures are then required of them. For example, travellers from low risk countries will only have to serve a 7 day quarantine compared to the usual 14. This helps to facilitate more favourable travel conditions to, to incentivize international travellers. Clustering provides important benefits such as efficiently reducing the risk of transmission through targeted stay-home notice me methods. 
Secondly, it also helps to provide reassurance to the public even as Singapore reopens its borders amidst rising global COVID-19 cases, as they show that the government has sufficient safeguards in place to curb further spread of the virus. Also, the aviation industry in Singapore contributes significantly to our economy. We need to reopen our borders as soon as possible, but also as safely as possible, and clustering will help us do that. So with that, I'll now pass the time on to Tati to tell you more about predictive analytics. Thank you, Eunice. So for this prediction, we'll be focusing on predictive analytics. We can understand predictive analytics as analytics that aims to determine what will likely happen in the future, and it is empirically based by making predictions based on past data. As the COVID-19 spreads quickly, this will strain countries' healthcare system. It is thus important to make use of predictive analytics to address the challenges faced. In US, the health organization Common Spirit faces challenges such as making accurate forecasts of the COVID-19 trajectory, and how they try to mitigate this is through making associations between various data points that would not normally be considered. Predictive models are built using public health information and data from the system of their own care sites. The trajectory is thus forecasted based on descriptive data such as population and availability of healthcare providers, as well as variable data like relaxing, relaxing of social distancing and normalizing new county cases. Looking at the, this graph on the left, descriptive analytics is used to confirm the accuracy of predictive model. After confirming the accuracy, descriptive analytics is then used to drive predictive analytics and thus forecast its future trend. With that, this allows the healthcare organization to gain valuable insights on the trends of COVID-19 infection rates. For example, two to three weeks after social distancing requirements are relaxed, we can witness a surge in infection rate. Furthermore, knowing the trends helps in better planning. This allows hospitals to work towards resuming their full spectrum of essential services. This insight also helps hospital administrators to redirect lower risk patients to other hospitals to free up resources for more severely affected patients. Lastly, long-term forecasting of COVID-19 cases within the span of three to six months will also be a benefit of predictive analytics. Thank you, panelists, for your insightful thoughts. As we continue to combat this virus as a whole, it is crucial for us to understand that this will not be the last time we see this level of virus outbreak. We should treasure and turn this crisis into an opportunity for us to invest and utilize big data effectively in the future. In addition, artificial intelligence is able to make accurate predictions and detect such virus early to cover the spread of the disease. For instance, in Wuhan, Blue Dot was able to detect an unusual spike in pneumonia cases weeks before official announcement to it. Perhaps an advancement in such technology will be able to minimize the spread of the next outbreak. So why do we choose healthcare industry, specifically COVID-19? It's because it's the biggest threat to the healthcare industry now and it's relevant to our life. Just as masks are used to contain the spread of COVID-19, so can big data function in a similar way too. Let's thank our panelists for today. Thank you.